Hello, welcome to Bishop TV. My name is Fabrizio Poli, and today we're going to be talking about five things private jet operators or private jet owners can learn from the low cost airline industry. Now, this is an interesting subject. Uh, a lot of people think of low cost airlines as cheap airlines, but they don't realize that, you know, low cost airline doesn't mean cheap airline, it means managing your flight operations in a certain way. And there's a five lessons that I'm going to be talking to you about in this episode where you can learn from to help you to um, you know run your private jets in a more effective manner I think this is really really interesting all stuff that I've learned throughout the years uh, having worked both in the airline industry and the private jet industry and think lessons that I thought would be interesting for those of you that follow BizJet TV if you haven't subscribed to BizJet TV I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and uh, comment below but anyway let's get straight in here and off we go into this episode of BizJet TV let's go <laughs> Now, the first one we're going to talk about is buying the right aircraft. Now, uh, a lot of the low-cost airlines uh, basically start off and they, they buy new aircraft. And ordering a new aircraft is always a good idea if you have that kind of money or if you can write off the uh, the acquisition and also the depreciation of the aircraft. Because obviously, if it's new, it's going to depreciate quicker than if you're buying pre-owned. Um, a lot of this will depend on your, on your situation. Uh, it is also a good idea to buy pre-owned aircraft. Uh, but when you do buy pre-owned, you've got to be very, very careful uh, that you do a thorough pre-buy inspection. You look at the history of, of the aircraft. Uh, and I had, you know, two low-cost airlines that I worked for. Uh, one bought brand new and the other one went and bought uh, pre-owned. And they also bought very badly. They went out to Eastern Europe and they bought these aircraft which had bad history. They weren't maintained well. Um, and consequently the airplanes were continuously going tech which means they, they were grounded or the flights were being delayed by two to three hours uh, I worked for this company just under a year um, it was just constantly constantly late and obviously this is a disruption for the passengers now you imagine you you have your own private jet and the last thing you want to do is you know be late for a meeting because your airplane broke down that's not going to look good for you on you and it's also if you're, if you're traveling with guests or you sent the airplane out to pick somebody up the last thing you want to do is you know for this shiny jet suddenly go tech so you have to buy the right aircraft and in order to do that you have to engage with a professional or a team of professionals that know how to source aircraft in the right way pre-buy inspection uh, and everything and also the legal side needs to be done because there can be surprises on the legal side as well that needs to be done carefully the second thing is maintenance and maintenance and Talking about you know these two low cost airlines that I worked for, uh, one uh, one team in one airline were very very good with their maintenance. They were just spot on. I mean, uh, four and a half years I worked for them, we were only late twice in four and a half years, and one was because terrorists tried to uh, smuggle uh, liquid dynamite onto the aircraft, and the second time was because we were waiting for a windscreen wiper to arrive from another base. Um, those were the only two times that we were late. Uh, the maintenance guys were spot on. Anytime there was a problem, they were on it and, you know, the airplanes got repaired. So having a, a good maintenance team is really, really important uh, because you may buy the right aircraft, but then if you don't maintain it a certain way. The other thing is uh, looking for spare parts. If suddenly uh, there is a problem, um, your people need to know where to source the, the spare parts, the spare parts that are reliable. The last thing you want to do is change a weather radar with another 40 weather radar. Uh, some people buy uh, used spare parts, um, which is not always a good idea. I'd be very, very careful if you're going to do that. But if you have bought a new aircraft, it will be covered by warranty at three to five years, depending on who you're buying from. And um, those will be new parts, and that will be part of, of the deal that you do. And again, you need to negotiate well and if you're buying a pre-owned aircraft make sure it's on an engine program and all that kind of stuff or a maintenance program of some sort which you pay so much per month and if anything does go wrong you get parts included in that so it's almost like an insurance uh, that is always a, a good thing to do the third thing is piloting technique um, and that is important for a number of reasons passenger comfort is one of them uh, the other one is uh, your pilots being trained to do what's called a continuous descent approach and I saw the difference with the, the two low-cost airlines that I worked with. Uh, one made us fly continuous descent approach. What does that mean? In technical terms, it means that the pilots will plan their descent in a way that the 45,000 feet, the thrust levers will go to idle. And so the fuel flow will go right down and the airplane will start its descent 
and the thrust levers will come back up again once the landing gear goes down. Now, a lot of air traffic controllers around the world I like airplanes to do this also from an environment perspective. It's good, you burn less fuel, you make less noise, uh, but not all pilots know how to do a continuous descent approach. In fact, some pilots, you ask them the question, what is a continuous descent approach? They won't even know what it is. Um, and so this is uh, something that I think is really, really important because you, you'll save on fuel. And just uh, comparing the two low cost airlines that I worked for, the one that did the continuous descent approach was burning 200 kilos less fuel per sector because of this piloting technique compared to the other one. The other one, by the way, is, went bust um, for you know for a number of reasons. Uh, so you know we can learn this lesson um, as private jet operators uh, from the low cost airline. Uh, the fourth lesson we can learn about is hiring pilots and flight attendants that think on their feet. This is important. Uh, I had a situation. I was working for a charter airline, and we flew into one of the Greek islands and the baggage handlers were on strike. So we could either delay the flight and uh, wait for the baggage handlers to come off strike, or as pilots, we could just load the bags ourselves. And that's exactly what we did. We went downstairs, rolled up our sleeves, and we load all the bags onto the airplane ourselves, and we got off on time. And the passengers really did appreciate that, and so did our bosses, uh, because they said, oh, how come uh, our bags have been loaded? Or are we going to see our bags when we get to Manchester? I said, yes, because we loaded the bags for you. And we let them know over the PA that that's what we did. Um, and that was great customer service. So, you know, obviously the airline, you know, recruited uh, two good pilots there that, you know, decided to go the extra mile. And especially when you're flying a private jet around the world, both your pilots and your flight attendants need to be able to think on their feet because things do happen, especially when you're going to, into outback places and whatever, knowing how to find the catering and things like that. And, uh, you know, there's things that you that you can do um, to to save money uh, and also to, to to be safe in that. So hiring the right pilots and the right flight attendants is really really important. Uh, what I do when I hire pilots and flight attendants is the only people that I hire are through my personal network. I don't need to advertise. Um, I've been around the industry enough and got a network all over the world. As I've maybe often said, I've flown with pilots from 65 different nationalities. So I know people in many different corners of the world. And if I don't know a pilot directly, I can ring a buddy up and they will recommend somebody. And I think this is really, really important, particularly with the private jet. It's not only um, what this person's like professionally, I mean, how they fly the plane, this, that, the other, and their experience as a pilot uh, or flight attendant. It's also what they're like as a person personality wise, their character in that. Um, how are they going to go about, you know, interacting with your guests? This is really important. Um, you know, having a chat with the guests uh, and, you know, putting on a good show for you and, and be well-rounded also in being able to talk about a number of subjects, not just aeroplanes. Um, so, you know, well-educated pilots and flight attendants are important because they were going to make you look good uh, with your guests. And I think that's really, really important. Um, number five is uh, don't look at how much the jet cost um and uh, the operating costs because you have to think of reliability and you have to think of what this airplane is going to do for you so for the low-cost airline industry we see a lot of these now low-cost airlines they tend to start off with enough capital to go out and buy new aircraft um, and I think that's 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 a good move on on their on their behalf as far as a private jet operations concern what um, I would really be careful of. Yes, it's important how much you pay for the aircraft. Yes, it's important uh, how much it costs to operate the airplane. But what you've got to think of in terms of what is this airplane going to do for me? What opportunities is this airplane going to open up for me? And sometimes, you know, I, uh, it may be better to buy a bigger aircraft or an aircraft that's got more range because this aircraft will be able to get you further afield. So you can then start to think, well, I don't really need to go that far yet. But if I did have a jet that could take me that far, uh, what extra things could I do? What, what, what extra deals could I end up doing? Um, and obviously airplanes with, um, with more range also have larger cabins. So you may still wanna fly the shorter distances, but now you've got a more spacious cabin, you can carry more people. So these are things to evaluate. Or you may look, for example, at buying a Pilatus PC-24, which is the only jet out there that's manufactured from scratch to land on grass or land on unpaved runways with a big cargo door. So, you know, that is an aircraft that opens up possibilities. I mean, yes, it is $12 million to buy one of these airplanes um, where you could buy a pre-owned, I don't know, um, Citation XLS, for example, which you can buy for less than $5 million. So what would make you decide 5 million for an, an XLS or 12 million for a Pilatus PC-24? Well, the Pilatus PC-24 will offer 
uh, the the ability to land on more uh, airstrips uh, because you know if take for example the United States you've got 5,000 paved runways all throughout America but if you do bring into the picture the unpaved runways the grass strips you've got about 10,000 landing strips to choose from plus you've got the cargo door so you know, I'm not saying that you should always buy a PC-24 but what I'm just saying is you have to evaluate what the airplane can actually do for you so don't just think in terms of how much does it cost how much is it going to cost to run because sometimes spending a bit more money can maybe end make you end up making more money because of the number of possibilities um extra possibilities and, and opportunities this airplane will open for you and your business so that's really it so just to recap so number one is buy the right aircraft number two uh, make sure you maintain it properly and hire the right maintenance crew to do that uh, piloting technique is number three number four is hire the right pilots and flight attendants people that can think on their feet and number five is don't just look at how much it's going to cost you to buy and operate the aircraft think of what this aircraft can actually do for you from a business perspective what how many more airports can you land there or having a larger cabin or having more range what other opportunities is that going to open up for you so you will measure the value of this operation and, and the real the real cost of the private jet you will measure about 18 months after you've been operating it where you'll be able to go down your balance sheet and say okay i did i don't know 30 30 trips over the course of 18 months and um 10 of these trips we couldn't have done with with, with another type of aircraft and out of these 10, 10 trips we did three deals which netted us 150 million dollars which we wouldn't have made if we hadn't had this type of aircraft and automatically there you see that it was worth spending the extra money on the bigger jet so that's really all from me on this episode of bizjet tv if you haven't subscribed to this channel i encourage you to subscribe to bizjet tv give us a thumbs up and comment below we'd love to hear your comments and also your suggestions and uh, also i encourage you to have a look at the other videos we've got here there's one here about aircraft maintenance i encourage you to have a look at that one and this other one on pilots and um, hiring pilots and and that and then this third one on the uh, three private jets under for under ten million dollars, and that's all from Fabrizio Poli on Bizjet TV, and I'll see you on the next one.